Mario's traveled pretty far since Mario Land 2, with his jump to the third dimension and his failed vacation to Al Delfino. But I do think it's time to reel it back and go back to where he started. And my god did they do that because this game fucking rules. Super Mario Bros, despite it being kind of a joke at this point, is a pretty solid name given that the goal of its release was to have a modern approach to the old formula and they did a pretty good job here. First off, the game controls pretty great. It's almost on par with Mario 2 for me, but I still think that game has the best controls so far. But I can't exactly pinpoint what it is that makes the controls better than Mario World's given that they both have the exact same issue, that speeding up and slowing down is not fast enough. But the controls do feel slightly better than Mario World's, despite me not being able to find whatever makes a control better. Mario also has no moves. Given that Mario 64 innovated on the Mario formula so much, it's a given that some of the games seeped into this one. Carried over from Mario 64, we got the triple jump and the ground pound. I don't remember using these too much throughout my playthrough, but certainly not a negative that they're here, though the ground pound has a pretty big flaw I'll mention later. Mario doesn't use three buttons anymore, the ground pound is mapped to down on the d-pad instead, but it never ends up being an issue given that the ground pound being assigned to down is a pretty good decision for a 2D game. The stored power up from Mario 3 and Mario World is back, now being mapped to the touch screen rather than the select button. It's a decent change, but there is one design choice I don't understand. When you go down a pipe, there's a chance that the level will start taking place on the bottom screen for as long as you're in the room. This is a cool little detail, but it makes the stored item completely unusable now that it's on the top screen. So why not just map it to the bottom? This is one of the stupidest design choices I've ever seen. I understand the want to show off. Con I want to. I understand the want to show off the console's capabilities, but this game came out two years into the DS's lifespan. Basically, everyone had a DS at this point, and this was completely unnecessary. I guess since I am talking about something related to power-ups, I should probably mention the three new items this game introduced. The mini mushroom just kind of sucks. It's basically a power down, considering you die in one hit and have to grand pan to kill any enemies. It does have the pros of a more floaty jump, but that doesn't really outweigh the cons, and this is a super dumb power up. More often than not, the mini mushroom would just be used as a requirement to get to certain secrets, and that's pretty shit game design if you ask me. Items being required for secrets is fine and all, but you have to actually base the puzzle or challenge around its abilities rather than just slapping a low ceiling there and calling it a day. The mini mushroom is just shit and should have never been made. Conversely, the blue shell is a pretty awesome power up. It's not one you're going to be finding super often, but it's it's always a fun surprise when you do considering this is like a top 5 power up. It allows you to shield yourself from common enemies by crouching, swim faster, and the coolest ability being the shell dash. By entering full speed you can quickly slide across the ground and hit any enemies in your path. It makes speedrunning levels really fun but I'm not a huge fan of how the game automatically enters the mode at full speed. It should be meant to pressing down while running like rolling in pizza tower. Still this is a fun power up to use and with another revision it could be even better than it already is. And finally we've got the Mega Mushroom. The Mega Mushroom was all over the advertising for the game. It's even on the front of the North American box art. If it wasn't obvious by the name, the Mega Mushroom turns you giant and allows you to rampage through the level for a short time. I used to like this thing, but in retrospect it's just a star with more spectacle, considering it adds essentially nothing. This would be fine if the star wasn't in the game, but both of them are in the game and have the exact same use. It's also super underutilized. While it appears in the first level of the game, the only other time you're going to be seeing it is in the Mega Mushroom Toad Houses. Oh yeah, the world map returns in this game and it's... okay. It functions well. There was never a time where I was confused about something here. But in general, the maps for the new Super Mario Bros games aren't as memorable as Mario Land 2's or Mario World's. The problem mostly lies in the disconnected worlds and the lazy layouts. There was never a point in the game where the world map layouts got more complex than that of the most basic Mario World layout aspects. And that's mainly in the fact that they're actively trying to be streamlined and boring. The worlds themselves also feel completely disconnected and that's because they are. In Mario World, the map felt like an actual world and it was fairly large in scope, but here the maps don't have any meaningful transitions. Mario just runs from one world to the next. 
Mario World had really basic transitions between worlds, but they make it obvious as to what the next world theme is going to be. Like the transition from Donut Plains to Vanilla Dome. Rather than Mario simply walking off screen and then being in a cave all of a sudden, Mario walks in this door that's obviously leading to a cave. They obviously could have done better. They could have had the ground collapse from underneath and now he's in a cave and that's a really cool idea and a way better looking transition. But at least the transition they do is in surface level. But here, yeah, Mario just runs to the next world with a fade to black transition and it's pretty lazy. I know I've talked about the lazy world map transitions for longer than I really should, but Mario World's map felt really special and well put together and I can't exactly skim over it. And while Mario World had no mini games or whatever, just the Switch Palaces, New Super Mario Bros sees the return of Toad Houses and these aren't all that great. The main toad house you'll be seeing throughout the game is the red toad house, and this is passable. There's simply a roulette block in the middle that has a bunch of power-ups on it, and it's not that great. The minigame itself is at least much more of a game than simply picking a box and seeing what you get, but it's really not much of a minigame, and a pretty decent step down from the card game in Mario 3 if you ask me. It's way better than the Mega Mushroom House though, as it is literally just a big question block in the middle that you hit and it gives you the Mega Mushroom. Why? First off, the Mega Mushroom isn't even built around most of the stages anyway, so it's basically a waste. But if you're gonna make something completely pointless, at least make it fun. But no, you just hit a block. The 1-Up House is easily the best one here. You gotta hit these blocks with 1-Up cards on them, and some of them are even multipliers. If you hit Bowser, the game is over and you get all the 1-Ups on the cards. It's at least more of a game than the Roulette Block, but I'll never do this willingly. That's mostly due to the minigame not being that fun, but also because lives are a complete joke in this game. There aren't any dumb mechanics that make them redundant, it's just the general easy difficulty of the game that makes 1-ups more of a collectible than something you'll be looking for. And the 1-up houses aren't worth your time or star coins if you ask me. Oh yeah, those come from this game. In each level you've got three different collectibles called the star coins, and these are pretty awesome. They used to unlock toad houses or extra levels on the world map, but given how little you make use of those, these are more of 100% completion collectibles rather than something useful. While they aren't useful at all, these improve the fun factor of the game a lot, and it's no surprise they'd go on to be used in later entries. The main reason behind these being so good is that the spots they're put in are generally pretty clever most of the time. Like this one in the first regular castle of the game, you have to go out of your way to enter this little door which is completely optional and once you're in there there's a bunch of shifting platforms and it's your job to get the coin while not dying. I, I don't know. It's a really simple example but it serves its purpose of being a bite-sized challenge well. I guess this also takes us to the level design which is mostly fantastic. You do have your occasional water and auto scroller levels and nobody likes those but in general the level designs do very little wrong. And the ghost house levels are much improved too. They have a few more simple puzzles and while not being intrusive they still keep the action platform intact, and I think this is honestly how they should be done from now on. I especially found the second half of World Out to be pretty fantastic. Most of those levels have really good designs and introduce a ton of new enemies and gimmicks. Like this one for World 8-6, it has a really well executed wraparound mechanic similar to that of the original Mario Bros arcade game. Or this one with falling lava rocks. It's a great build up to the final level which might be one of the best levels in the series. It starts with some pretty simple level design but then incorporates this super creative level rotating mechanic and it's really well executed and allows for the level to be much longer. It even has an homage to the guess and check levels from Mario 1 near the end where you have to pick the right path or get sent back, but they're done much better here because you actually get a sound key to tell if you did it right or not. It's a really well done level and executes almost everything perfectly on all fronts. Their final confrontation with Bowser however, uh, it really sucks. Following up a top 10 level in the series with this is almost insulting. It's got a cool idea having you fight Bowser and Bowser Jr at the same time, but it's executed really poorly with Bowser Jr being no different from his previous battles and Bowser just sort of, well, being there. And it's once again super anticlimactic and boring, even more so than Mario Sunshine. The bosses in general all sort of suck. They have the exact same problem as that Bowser fight I just talked about in that their ideas aren't inherently bad but they execute on them pretty poorly or just end up being too easy. Bowser is almost identical to his Super Mario Bros counterpart. He does jump slightly lower so it's a little harder but I'll never be convinced to like this fight. Mummy Poker is next and he's way better though that's a low bar. He digs in and out of the ground and occasionally shoots this weird rock at you and you have to hit him on his head before he digs back into the ground. It's a cool idea and could definitely be a good boss but he's really easy given that his projectile is barely fired and he stays exposed for longer than he should be. 
Cheap Skipper is the boss of World 3 and is pretty decent. He has these three little shit heads that jump out the water alongside him to attack you and like with the mummy poke you have to be diligent enough to hit him in time. It's still pretty easy but the window for hitting him is more precise making for a harder boss. PD Piranha is the boss of World 5 and he's kinda boring honestly. He flies around for a few seconds and then tries to dive at you, slipping on the ice and becoming vulnerable for a few seconds. It's a fine idea and the ice makes it a tiny bit harder but he flies around for too long before attacking and it ends up being a waiting game which I'm starting to notice is a bit of a theme for this boring ass dude. Thankfully Monty Tank makes up for it because he's goaded and without a doubt a top 5 2D Mario boss. His tank moves around while the cannons turn around or shoot bullet bills at you occasionally. The mole will pop out after a few seconds to throw a bomb at you and you have to jump on his head to damage him. It starts off pretty simple but each hit adds a new level to the tank. And on the last hit you might even have to bounce off of a bullet bill to reach him if using the cannons as platforms isn't an option. It's a super fun and progressive fight and with a bit more challenge this could be a top 5 Mario boss. If you're wondering why I didn't talk about the bosses for World 4 and 7, it's because unlocking them is really weird. You have to beat World 2 and 5's bosses using the mini mushrooms to get to World 4 and 7 respectively and it's probably a decent little challenge but honestly I can't be fucked, the game is good enough. There is one more boss I need to talk about because Nintendo got really carried away with him. This little shithead Boom Boom got reincarnated into Bowser Jr's body, so now you gotta fight Bowser Jr 9 times throughout the main story, not counting World 4, 7 or the final boss. But not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind as much if the boss was actually good, so let's see what we've got here. It sucks ass too! He runs at you and you have to hit him 3 times to kill him, that's it. In some versions of the fight he hides in a spike shell when near Mario so you can't jump on him by normal means, meaning you have to throw the shells he throws back at him to hit him. That's a cool idea but it's still far too easy. What's worse is that the boss is made even more redundant once you start using Grand Pounds. Grand Pounds deal twice as much damage than regular stomps which is a really dumb design choice if you ask me and it ends up making the bosses easier than they already are. If you have something that's going to deal twice the damage and usable on the fly, at least make it a challenge to use because if you don't it often makes your normal attack completely redundant and it also limits the versatility of the character. They should have used a less accessible move or just removed the double damage thing altogether because it ends up hindering the overall enjoyment of the bosses and they feel like more of a waste of time because of it. But honestly I'd much rather have boring bosses that take 30 seconds than a really annoying boss that goes on for way longer and that applies especially with this game because again, it's it's just really fun. I also really like the designs of the bosses in general. The previous 2D games had fine boss designs but I felt like they blended together too much. But here? No, that doesn't apply at all, they're all creative. My favourite has to be the Monty Tank. Not only is this fight really good as I've already mentioned but I also really like the idea that this is just some random Monty mod that got a hold of a tank. But aside from that the bosses have unique designs all around and it helps to separate this game from the other new Super Mario Bros games. But sadly I don't think that's enough because in general my biggest complaint for the game is that it's just a bit bland. While I do think there's enough to set out apart from the other new series games, it's not as creative as you'd hope for a return to the 2D formula. It does have a few unique aspects such as the enemy designs. Not all of them are hits, I'm not a huge fan of these acorn guys and there's a lot of variations on basic enemies but there's a few I really like here. Bruisers and block hoppers are some of my favourites and this isn't an enemy but for whatever reason I really like these bullet bill cannon tower things in world 6. But outside that the game is pretty generic and it makes the game less memorable than it realistically should be considering how good this game is. But I will say it does look fantastic. When blown up on a big screen like this it's pretty obvious that the game blends 3D models and 2D tiles and it's hidden pretty damn well for the most part. I will say I'm not a huge fan of the backgrounds. It's one thing to have 3D models and hand drawn 2D tiles but I think it's pretty obvious that some of them are 3D models they pre-rendered and put into the game. The soundtrack is great though, one of the best so far. The songs are really energetic most of the time and it gives the game this distinct vibe where you can tell if the songs from the game. Everyone obviously loves the grassland theme but the castle theme and volcano themes are really underrated. And the world map songs are overall really catchy, especially world 3 and 5. However the game is still not perfect obviously. Another complaint I have with this game is dying. When you die you get booted back to the world map. This is how it worked in previous games and I already wasn't a fan of it there but it's emphasized even more here given that the levels in this game are relatively long. They could have easily had an option pop up when you die asking you if you want to retry from the last checkpoint. This would have made it a lot more tolerable and wasted less time but I guess Nintendo just couldn't be fucked. But I don't think it's as big of an issue as the blandness and it's clear Nintendo made it generic on purpose. It's not like Nintendo made this decision for nothing. They clearly wanted to introduce new fans to the series and that clearly worked, I mean this is the best selling DS game. And as far as I'm concerned it's not a huge issue for a one off. 
But if this is the path Nintendo is going down, I don't think I'm going to be in the best of moods by the end of this marathon. Last thing to mention, the bonus content in this game is absolutely fantastic. While I can't test out the Mario vs Luigi mode as the servers are shut down, the minigames are fucking great. I obviously made a video on them which you can check out now or after the video. But the verdict on the minigames is that while only around 9 of them are actually worth playing, at least in my opinion, the 9 games listed are really fucking great. And in general this is just a cool thing to include. Most of them are taken from Mario 64DS but it's cool that they're here anyway and they're probably some of my fondest memories I have from playing the game. I think the general consensus on the game is that it's fun but pretty generic. Generic. And that's a really fair assessment. The blindness of a game as a whole might be a turn off for some players, but for those willing to stick it to the end, I think you might have one of the best Mario platforms on your hands. And honestly, I'd much rather play this than many of the games that are up next. What is the next one anyway? <sighs> Great. But back to the 3D titles. Let's hope Nintendo improved on what worked and ditched the shit. Because if this game is anything like Mario 64 or Sunshine, well, I don't know. But as is, you should definitely check out New Super Mario Bros. It's a super fun game with almost no flaws and it's aged really well over the years as opposed to games like Mario 64. Honestly, despite this being a really solid game, it had way less to say about it than I thought. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's going right below Mario Land 2, very close to the top of the list. And it's not a nostalgia thing either, it's definitely got flaws. The bosses for the most part aren't good, the power-ups can be really underutilized, and in general it's just not that memorable. But despite that, the platforming of New Super Mario Bros is amazing, even if not too creative, and the minigames are one of my favourite things in the Mario series to date. This is a great game, and one that doesn't have much staying power after playing, in my opinion this has to be one of Mario's best. You'll definitely see the new Super Mario series go downhill from this point, so I appreciate it while it lasts. I'm pretty split on this next one. While I can't say anything on the game's quality just yet, both of the 3D games I've played so far ended up being really disappointing. But as for now, new Super Mario Bros is definitely my personal favourite, and it's just a great game too. Well, I think it's time for the next game.